O. Henry. And we're not talking about the candy bar here, kids. Today, we're checking out 10 things that make Blue Oval Muscle Cars the favorite of so many fans. Ford was smart to hook up with Carroll Shelby in the mid-1960s, and we all know the outcome of that partnership. From racing Shelby GT350 Mustangs to a championship at Le Mans, the Shelby contributions to Ford performance are pretty incredible. And we could dedicate this whole episode to Shelby stuff, but we've got a lot of ground to cover, so we're calling our number 10 element the Shelby Connection. We've done several special Shelby episodes and feature cars on Muscle Car of the Week, and we invite you to check them all out. Next up is the first appearance of the boss on our list in the form of a street-going version of the Mustang Trans Am racer called the Boss 302. It was named after designer Larry Shinoda's boss, Bunky Knudsen, and it featured a high-revving 302 cube V8 jammed with stronger parts for speed and longer-lasting power. The car had special suspension for better handling and braking and a four-speed manual transmission between the bucket seats. Ford had to build 500 of these to compete in SCCA Trans Am Racing, and we always dig a clean Boss 302. You can see both of these and a couple more Boss 302s by digging through the archives of Muscle Car of the Week on our YouTube channel. Next up is the Mach 1 package offered on Mustangs. Given the name means the speed of sound, you'd think the Mach 1 option was a performance package, but it was really more about comfort and style. Mach 1s could come with a variety of engines. Of course, we like the 428 Cobra Jet versions the best. Other Mach 1 stuff included striping, special exhaust tips, cool red carpet and seat inserts in the 69 cars, racing mirrors, and optional spoilers. This Gulfstream Aqua car is one of only two that were built with a factory installed sunroof. And you can see more of these two cool Mach 1s from the Brothers Collection in Muscle Car of the Week episodes number 9 and 244. Ford racing engines found their way into other cars like the Sunbeam Tiger and the Shelby Cobra and for good reason. The 289 V8 was compact enough to fit into smaller chassis racers, and when the need for more speed came about, Shelby widened the snake to accept the angry 427, and the result was a racer that had longer legs on the big Grand Prix tracks and jaw-dropping performance on the street. The Red Cobra is a 289 car that you can see in episodes 47 and 48, where we interviewed the man who raced it back in 67. The Green Snake is a 428-powered streetcar, and its story is told in episode 176. And speaking of Cobras, next on our list is the 428 Cobra Jet V8 engine. This big block powerhouse was considerably underrated at 335 horsepower when it hit the streets in 1968, but the proof was how it became the quickest Mustang ever at the drag strip. Everything about the Cobra Jet is beefed up, from the forged bottom end to the high compression pistons and heavy breathing cylinder heads. And they came in a lot of different cars, from Mustangs to Torinos, Rancheros, and more. We're showing a cool Torino as our example car, and you can learn more about the details in episode 340. Next, we're spotlighting a Ford part that has transcended the brand, and that's the nine inch rear axle. These are built tough, some with nodular iron center sections, and their design allowed for easy gear changes at the track. You just drop the center out and switch it for another pre-built unit with different gears. The 9-inch name refers to the diameter of the ring gear, but they had different widths and axle spline counts depending on the car in which they were installed. And many were swapped into other makes, as you could grab a 9-inch from a Ford van and stuff it under a race car pretty cheaply. This one is getting abused in an awesome 1967 Ford Galaxy 7 liter 427 from episode 318. Our next cool Ford performance highlight are the lightweight racers built for drag racing. These factory back cars ran in super stock and FX classes 
and featured fiberglass and aluminum panels for weight reduction, resulting in higher speeds. Ford wasn't the only company to build lightweight cars, but we think their diet rods were some of the coolest. You can check out our whole special episode on the lightweight cars in episode number 344. And now the boss is back. In 1969 and 1970, Ford worked with CarCraft to create what many consider to be the baddest Mustang ever, the Boss 429. These featured the imposing Boss 429 engines, which used a hemispherical cylinder head design clamped in place with O-rings to the new 385 series block, resulting in a screaming Speedway performer that you could also get on the street. The Boss 9, as they were called, was built for NASCAR, but Ford was able to use the Mustang platform for their streetcar version, even though Mustangs didn't race in the series. It's a cool story on a great program, and you can learn more in episodes 32 and 123 of Muscle Car of the Week. Next up is one of the most amazing engines Ford ever produced, the single overhead cam 427. This was a race-only piece that featured special cylinder heads stuffed with four valves per cylinder atop the FE Series 427 side oiler block. A giant timing chain kept the dual cam system in sync, and these were making over 600 horsepower all day long. You can hear the story of one of the most successful and famous 427 sock motor pilots, Gas Ronda, in our Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals coverage feature video. You can find it on our YouTube channel. And finally, we present the 427 side oiler and top oiler V8s in our number one position. The 427 walked the line between a street engine and a race engine with up to 12 to 1 compression and over 500 horsepower sold to the general public. These featured a high nickel, thin wall block with steel internals for strength and solid lifters for reliability. The earlier versions, or top oilers, fed oil to the crank through a passage just below the camshaft. However, Ford realized that in order to keep this engine happy during long, high RPM races, like Le Mans, more oiling would be needed. So they added a passage down the left side to feed the crank first and then up to the valve train, hence the name side oiler. These aren't the most powerful Ford engines ever built, but it was the racing engine that was found in streetcars like our R-Code Galaxy and also the engine that won Le Mans. Too cool. You can see this one in episode 190 of Muscle Car of the Week. Thanks for checking out our list of 10 top Ford racing contributions, and we'll be back next time with more cool stuff from the Brothers Collection on Muscle Car of the Week. <laughs>